Welcome to Transmissions Alt Mode, where we talk about all news, comics, and media related to the Transformers. On this episode, we get back into comic reviewing with Void Rivals number four. Today is Friday, October 6, 2023, and this is episode 358 of Transmissions Alt Mode. Welcome to Transmissions Alt Mode, the podcast that knows karma's a bitch. I'm your host, Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team of Jeremy. Hello. Uh, you can point the other way, but... <laughs> no. That's it's showing it. It's showing it on my side. Oh. Oh, well. Okay, whatever. How are you doing? <laughs> let's talk Transformers. Yes, let's. Uh, all right. So uh, we start off the show every week by uh, talking about Donatrions and how much we love them. Uh, we have a Patreon that you can join for as little as a buck and for as much as a bajillion. As much as you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, if anyone out there wants to join for a bajillion, just let, I mean, you can contact us and we'll let you know. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty high number, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you can join us. You can listen to the show live. Frankly, that's probably some of the best, uh, the best value is just being able to listen to it live because these shows that we have been recording these last couple of weeks, they are trash without Charles here. <laughs> we edit them to clean the hell out of them and, and. We do a lot of a lot of cutting, so if you're here when we're recording them, you get uh, you get quite the show. Um, so yeah, join us for the trash. Um, so uh, our, we have a lot of different stuff that we uh, offer to our donatrions, uh, including exclusive bonus shows like we like big bots. Sorry, it was there. You go. <laughs> And uh, that is a show that uh, is hosted by myself and Dr. Pants. And uh, we have uh, 10 episodes that are up there. We are in the process of hoping to do more. Um, and uh, we, uh, you know, we got uh, some uh, life stuff happen. And now we're, we're looking at uh, getting back into the, the, the swing of things by making a few more of these. The writer's strike is over. You guys can start getting That's true. <laughs> That's true. So we can we can get back into the studio for these, um, but for anybody who uh, is uh, new to our Donatrion, then uh, you know check them out. There's ten of them up there, uh, and go watch them. They're they're quick and and easy and and about thirty minutes a piece. So yeah, pretty pretty digestible. Uh, we also have the uh, long running Empire of Rust show uh, that uh, is uh, currently at the end of season two. And uh, while it is uh, season three gets written and organized, uh, there is a bonus show getting produced called The Rustford Files. And that is uh, where our, uh, our good friend uh, Mike, who, has, who runs Empire of Rust, is going to play for once. So that'll be kind of fun to see him on the other side of the table. And uh, yeah, so check that out. It's a fun little uh, uh, side adventure. And uh, yeah, uh, a nice little bit of... Uh, of what is it uh uh tabletop rpg or something like that live play R rpg live play rpg yeah uh so yeah check that out uh empire of rust and the rustford files you can find it at uh, transmissionspodcast.com slash rust uh we are a partner with toy hacks and we have a brand new code because it's a brand new month so we can you can use the code skybound that's S K Y B O U N D to save 15% at toyhacks.com. And uh, this code can be used with your robo points, but cannot be combined with any other discounts or promotions. Uh, this code does change every month. So uh, this is the first week of October, and you can use this brand new code. Last month's code does not work anymore. So, uh, you know, scrap that if you're making an order at, at Toy Hacks. But uh, yeah. This is great, and we love having Toy Hacks as a partner. And uh, at some point, Charles will come back, and we will be able to do a new drawing because we have a, a drawing for a $10, $10 gift code 
uh, at Toy Hacks, and uh, we need a winner, so yeah. we got to make a new drawing. We never did a September one because of Charles. Charles That's right. Fault. He should never leave. Yeah. And lastly, uh, <clears throat> this week was the release of Transformers number one from Skybound, hence the code at Toy Hacks. See? Synergy. And uh, this is a comic that uh, has been a long time coming. And we, as a podcast, commissioned a exclusive cover. And this cover is by artist EJ Sue. And you can get it at, by uh, going to transmissionspodcast.com slash comic. And it's $15 plus shipping and handling. And this is a uh, something that uh, is very limited in qual- quantity. So if you're looking for, uh, for a cover... Um, something exclusive, uh, perhaps we can fill that need. Uh, And that is something that uh, we are pretty happy to do. We also have a previous cover that we did for Transformers Till All Are One, number one. And you can bundle that with this order uh, for an additional $5. And uh, it should be pretty pretty easy to do. Uh, I know a lot of people have done that already. Uh, We also have a, a... past episode of, of alt mode where we actually did an interview with uh, artist ej sue talked to him about his life in comics uh prior to idw then working with idw and then uh doing this cover for us so we're very happy about that as well um so very cool to have uh, uh, ej sue working with us for this cover and uh you can get it at transmissionspodcast.com slash comic all right, now we're going to move into the meat of the show, and this episode is a comics review episode, and we are going to uh, review Void Rivals number four. All right, and yeah, I think we both showed this off on Trips to the Store in the toy show this week. Uh, we both got it in paper form. And um, let's get into it. Uh, I'm just going to show cover A here, which is the one that is in the book. But we, there are, I think, um, according to TF Wiki, there's like five or six covers. Um, yeah. But yeah, th- I think this one is is, is fine. It, it looks good. Once Charles is back, I'm sure we'll have to get into all the different covers and stuff, but the review process is not as easy yet, you know, compared to what we had with IDW. But uh, the the cover does have, uh, what was the name? The Premier, uh, hold on, Premier Zaliak is is the character here on the cover. And um, it's his throne room and stuff, so the the story here let's get into that um it starts immediately after the last issue where uh solia had knocked out darak and she is taking the ship to zertonia and she's piloting uh, the hand droid on derek's hand activates and though he's still unconscious the hand droid has limited control over the body and he's able to punch solia to grab derek's gun Handroid then orders her to change course and head to Agora. But with the limited control over Derek's body, he doesn't have the ability to actually see what, you know, or feel the body. So he doesn't notice until she points it out that she has her spear right at Derek's chest. And his job is to preserve Derek's life. So he has, he doesn't have the bargaining position he thought he had and he drops his weapon. On Zertonia, a representative of the citizens re- citizenry is petitioning Premier Zaliak, asking for more water for his people. He's interrupted by someone that is alerting the Premier to an incoming ship that is, uh, um, that's headed their way. Back on the ship, Solia has Derek in handcuffs, and he says that he thought that they had become friends, but Solia denies this, and then they settle on just being rivals. Hence the name of the book. Void rivals. <laughs> However, they both agree to keep what they learned about each other a secret until they know who to trust. The ship 
lands in Sartonia, greeted by Zaliak and the Phalanx guards and a crowd of people around him. The guards haul Derek away to the prison as the crowd hurls insults at him. Celia apologizes for Zaliak for um, not completing her mission, but he assures her that he has brought uh, that she has brought Zertonia a gift. On Cybertron, Skuxoid has brought his Quintesson prisoner before Shockwave. Uh, he's expecting the Decepticon to pay handsomely for one of their hated enemies. Shockwave, however, is outraged. He he said that even if he wanted the Quintesson. He has no currency that he can use to pay for it. He barely has enough energon to keep himself active. And um, all of his fellow Decepticons are currently in stasis. The Skuxoid tries to figure out some, something to barter for trade, but Shockwave sim tells him just to leave before he strips the Rockeroid for parts. Back in Zertonia, the... Um, Zaliak is, is telling Solia that he believes Derek will make a valuable asset for trade in exchange uh, for resources from Agora, knowing that Derek is known as Agora's greatest pilot. Solia expresses her relief that he won't be harmed. And then Zaliak questions why she would even care for an Agorian. And she tries to play it off as just having respect after what they've been through. But then Zaliak asks if she ever actually saw his face, and she hesitates. In his prison cell, Derek is, is working to try to figure out a way or figure a way to get out. Handroid tells him that he can't find any weaknesses in the cell, and that he's most likely being uh, kept alive for use as bargaining or something like that. The doors to the cell suddenly open, and two Zertonian guards throw Solia inside the cell. She tells him that the Premier could tell that, even though she didn't say it, he, he knew the truth that, um, or he knew that she had seen the face, and she knows the truth between the two, the two factions. Derek starts laughing after what's happened. She double-crossed him, and then this is what she gets out of it. Zaliak goes down to a secret room inside his chambers and he removes his helmet, then calls Minister Doolin from Agora on a secure channel, telling him that a Zertonian war warrior recently returned with an Agorian pilot and they've seen each other's faces and know, know the truth. Zaliak tells Doolin that he will deal with Sylvia in the manner that they agreed. Zaliak then tells him tells Doolin that the pilot is his son, but Doolin tells him to do do what he was going to do. His son was lost to him long ago. And then Doolin ends the call and hangs his head. So that is the summary of the book. Uh, I thought it was very interesting. The, the art was fantastic throughout the book, particularly the Shockwave page. I thought Shockwave looked fantastic. I'm going to go to that real quick. See if I can just hold it up. There it is. <clears throat> I'm gonna let's see. There we go. Ooh, there. So that, that shockwave. Ah, there we go. Yeah, that shockwave looks really good. I'm I'm very very impressed because transformers are not easy to draw. Um, I I, I wouldn't know because everything is not easy for me to draw, but. Artists that we've talked to over the years have always said how complicated they are and, and they're not as easy as like humanoids and stuff. So I thought Shockwave looked fantastic. Um, but the art throughout the book was good. Uh, the story I thought was interesting and then I wasn't really expecting at the end that, that the leaders of the two factions Actually, like, I, I thought the, the split between the two had happened long ago. And the current leaders, I, I wasn't expecting to kind of be keeping up the charade. So that, that was interesting to me. Um, and now the, the two rivals are, are now forced together again. So uh, this series com continues to just, like, I, I'm not one to kind of venture out 
outside of my my normal like superhero comics or transformer books and this this series has hooked me even outside of the transformers references so i'm looking forward to continuing it um daryl you said in the the other show that you read all the issues together in one sitting because you had to catch up uh how was that and what was your thought on this book uh yeah you're right i uh i had uh, just in you know uh because the uh, the previous reviews were without me so i just uh didn't seem to have a reason to read them other than i mean i'd been getting told all the the juicy bits anyway so i felt like i had you know knew everything but i uh, felt like i to do the show justice i should read them all you know you know word for word to know exactly what happened but uh sit down and read them all um they i mean it was it was easier to get into the world than than to have to do it month by month by month i mm -hmm. feel like if it was only issue one and then having to wait um for somebody who reads as many comics as i do uh trying to remember the names of everybody is is difficult yeah when they're they're um when they're uncommon night type names like uh, Darak and Solius and stuff like that, they're, they're, yeah. they're not common names. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult for somebody like me to, to kind of remember all of that. Um, the, uh, the book itself, I have to remind myself it's Robert Kirkman book. So, because he has a certain style and a certain pace that um, I had to come to understand when I read the first 100 issues of Walking Dead. Um, he will go, he will go like five issues where nothing happens. Uh, he'll barely move the plot. And then like the sixth issue, he'll just drop a bomb on you and then move it again for like nothing for like five issues again, you know? And then you'll say, holy shit, did you see what happened five issues ago? I'm like, yeah, I did. But I've bought five issues since then and nothing's happened. And then, you know, then that next issue, he'll, you know, drop another bomb. So the pacing is very Kirkman-esque where it's slow, but there's, he's still, he's still moving the ball. But again, it's, it's, it's very slow and methodical, mm -hmm. right? So that's interesting. This is my first Kirkman book. So, okay. I never got into the walking dead or anything. So it, it's good to know going into it. Yeah. If, I mean, if anybody out there has read walking dead, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like there were stretches in there where absolutely nothing happened. There was one book in particular in mean, that first 100, I never read anything past it. Cause I was like, okay, the big thing is something big happened in issue 100. And I'm like, I'm done now. I'm done. So, but there was an issue in that first 100 where the where two characters sat on a hillside and talked <laughs> for the entire book. And I'm sure you loved it. I just that was fantastic. I think they were watching some zombies or something in the you know the background, but anyway, the, so it can be real a real slog at some points, but then there's still there's some crazy shit will happen and you know the issue 100 of walking dead was a perfect example. Like he swung for the fences and nailed it, hit it out of the park with that one. But it was just, that was the icing on the cake for me to say, okay, I'm, I can't deal with another hundred issues of this. I'm done. I'm going to tap out here. Um, but anyway, the, um, so the, the, the book being moved along so slowly is, is, is very good. Each issue having a very strategic transformers reference is is very funny right. um you know obviously issue one having uh skyfire uh are they calling him skyfire or jetfire i can't remember I jetfire okay um so then that one and then issue two it was uh skuxoid and then issue three it was the quintesson uh executioner mm -hmm. um and then now issue four you finally get another transformer with shockwave right so each issue is having some some random specific transformers reference and it's it's very interesting to see you know this issue 
did not need to have shockwave in it. It's simply inserted in there, you know. It, it was abrupt, which very it there like I don't know. It, it just like it, they needed to get that in there and just pick two pages for it to happen. But it does kind of set up, which um, I was going to get into a little bit later the in the letters page, but uh, resources apparently is going to be a big thing about the whole Energon universe. And that's why they gave it the okay. name Energon universe. Right. Um, Cause like with, with the void rivals characters, it's like water and those type of resources. Whereas with Cybertronians, it's Energon mm -hmm. and you know, they're, they're trying to build that parallel, but yeah, it was abrupt in the yeah. scene change. Now I, I did notice there was a parallel between the pages preceding the shockwave page and then the shockwave page, obviously the, the citizen meeting with premier what's his nuts. Um, and then, and then he was there to say, to say, Hey, I need some water for my crops because, you know, I'm trying to grow shit for you to eat. Um, you know, maybe you should help me out. And then you get the shockwave one where the skunksoid is saying, Hey, I got this guy for you, you know, hook me up with some, you know, some, some cash. And so it's both, both of those interactions are, are somebody bringing, uh, well, not really the, the interaction, but somebody going to a, a superior and saying, Hey, I need something from you. So there was a similarity for me between those two interactions, but the, the whole book could have done without the, the shockwave pages it was yeah. they were like you said they were very abrupt and you could have removed them from the book and it would have been completely fine um but it was they look great they look fantastic <laughs> right so yeah. it's one of those things that i don't know i mean are they shoehorning transformers into each f into each issue just to keep people like keep transformers fans buying these books probably yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, it, it works stupid. better. We're gonna buy the, them. It, it it works better with the story in the the other like the first three. Sure. But, yeah. 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 You know, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with the rest of them. What happens to Void Rivals when the Transformers ongoing is 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 going strong? You know, do they still keep shoehorning in you know random characters, or do they actually start inter interacting? Uh, I mean from the three page preview that they repeated in this issue. Right. Wait, they didn't give us in the back of the book. What? Yeah. Oh, wow. I know. <laughs> did you not see that? How did you not know? <laughs> um, yeah. So it was the same information we got from the, uh, you know, from in the last issue, but um, we know that the transformers are on earth, you know, we, yeah. so they, you know, there's, so there's there's a little bit of of distance between you know shockwave and and his comrades here that obviously he everyone else on cybertron is in stasis and he's got a a group of them that are on earth that are busted up it, so they do mention in the letters page about the distance that the sacred ring which is where we are here in this book is closer to cybertron than to earth but still not very far away since, or but still very far away since none of the characters have ever encountered a transformer before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's still kind of a little bit, you know, not sure. But the one thing that I am unclear it. about: so the sacred ring is a solid object, mm -hmm. and. Both of these races live on the solid sacred ring. Yeah, and apparently the ring surrounds a black hole. Okay, there's your void. Yeah, um, they're the, the rivals uh, of the void. So, yes. <laughs> so, so are one of them on like the north side of it, and the others are on the south side, or one of them on the like I, I, well, one half the, of the donut, the, and the other ones connected. are on the other half of the donut. Oh, there's think multiple it, rings. No, I mean I think it's like halves are not necessarily connected. I can't remember the, the early issues are what really kind of explained it. Um, 
I read them have... today, and I don't remember <laughs> oh. seeing anything about the sacred rings. I see, I saw a picture, a picture of the sacred ring, and and it didn't really give me any detail on how they they all lived there, which is why I'm asking the question. Okay, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how it works. Where is Charles? Uh, I know. <laughs> it. Let's see. And there's no probably yelling the at the sacred ring. Yelling at his radio right now. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm sure it will all be explained uh, in the letters column that uh, they actually had Robert Kirkman answer some questions on there. It doesn't go into it other than it's just, you know, someone asked how it doesn't get sucked into the black hole. And they're like, science. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know, but, um, let's see. And then they asked about someone wrote in about asking about things from the IDW universe being incorporated. And, uh, they said that the G1 car cartoon is the primary inspiration, though it is not the same continuity, mm -hmm. just the inspiration, but they're going to weave in elements from other media eventually. Cool. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and I also realized I forgot to give the credits for the book. So other than written oh. by Robert Kirkman, art by Lorenzo De Felici, who again did a fantastic job. Colors by Matthias Lopez or Lopes. Or it's, probably, it's probably Lopez, I'm guessing. I am sorry. Um, letters by Ru Russ Wooten. And the editor is Sean Makowitz. So you're out of practice. So I mean, I, I am. I, I had to like. When I opened up my OneNote to write in the review and stuff, I had to dust it off. It was, you know, I hadn't used it in a while. Yeah. Who, who installs a dust app? I know. It's crazy. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> I, I still, I, I'm enjoying the series a lot. And I'm just hoping that the other Energon Universe elements are weaved in a little bit better than they were in this issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, do you have anything else on this? Um, I'm more I'm more interested in how the the series is going to continue, um, like what they're going to do with it once the uh, the Transformers ongoing starts. The um, I I read a lot of comics, and the story they're telling here is not unique. Mm -hmm. Right, two warring factions get stuck somewhere and have to work together to save themselves. Yeah, okay, we've we've seen that story before. Um, then uh, you know, there's there is even I think an episode of Star Trek where the warring factions yeah, ended up yeah, being the, the same people. Like right. So I mean, is there there are some Star Trek elements to this as well, right? So uh, there's there's portions of this story that I feel like I've seen or heard before. Um, but the transformers component of it is where it's going to be, uh, different, right? Cause star Trek never had transforming robots. So not until the comic. That's, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yes, you're right. Fortress Tiberius. That's right. Um, so I, I'm, I'm interested to see how that, uh, aspect is, is, you know, worked into, the uh, the story um yeah so we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes from here uh yeah but uh yeah I, i'm as far as the story goes i'm not thrilled with the way it's being told so far it's 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 not unique enough for me um i am very similar to you as far as the my comic buying i'm i like my superhero stuff generally and then uh, I'll I'll dip my toe into other other avenues like horror or something like that. Um, I don't generally get into sci-fi too too hard, mm -hmm. but uh, you know I, I save that for my TV. I need the special effects. Right. It's not the same when you're reading them. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, I I go in and out of both the Star Trek and the Star Wars series in comics, but um, we'll, we'll see how well. I stick with this. I'm enjoying it now, but I think it, it's interesting from the two different sides of like you are, you've read a lot of Kirkman 
This is my first. So I, I wouldn't go with a lot. I've uh, he had one book. That issues is a lot. A hundred. Oh, I, just, <laughs> I counted as one series, I mean, right? And I didn't even finish. Too? I read a few Invincible, um, okay. and there was another one that I'm totally spacing on the name of, um, but I only I only grabbed about twenty five issues of that. So okay. I've read a few. I've read a few Kirkman, and he definitely has a style. So right. it, it it'll be interesting once we're all together again, like with Charles, because I know he's gone through Invincible. Yes. So you know, just be interesting to see like the different perspectives, and then we you know. We'll have the, the Transformers book next week, which has different creative team. Um, and uh, we'll see where we're going to go from there. I, I don't know if the G.I. Joe books are going to need to be covered on our show or not. It, I mean, depending on whether they have Transformers or not, I guess. Mm -hmm. There, There's a Starscream is on the cover of Duke number one. <laughs> so that's true. Yeah, I saw that today. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. But uh, I'm excited. A whole new universe with all the integration planned from the beginning rather than being shoehorned in like three quarters of the way through the life of the books. You know, hopefully it works well. So that that is our comic review this week. All right. Well, that's going to take us to the end of the show. Uh, we generally uh, don't do any topics on the uh on the review shows. So we're uh, doing what Charles wants and not doing any topics. Blame Charles. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we want to say thank you to our, our masterpiece donatrons. We generally give them a shout out at the end of the show and you can become one too. Uh, just like John four X 11 good and demon tech 82. Thanks guys for being awesome. And uh, anybody else wants to be awesome, just like those two guys, uh, you can join our Donatrion uh, at uh, transmissivespodcast.com. And uh, you can do that and uh, be awesome. You don't have to be Masterpiece Donatrion awesome. You can still be just regular awesome um, by uh, joining at a lesser love. level. Yeah, we, we love all our Donatrions. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, this is... Uh, um, yeah, that's that's the end of the show. I got nothing else. Thanks, Jeremy, for hanging out with me. Um, you know, I know we're both exhausted, and uh, it's you know, we are mandated uh, to put out a show every week. Uh, so we are here doing our due diligence yeah. and getting the shit done. Yeah. So, you know, thanks, Jeremy, for being here. You're welcome. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> anytime buddy anytime <laughs> all right thanks a lot guys we'll talk to you next week later Bye. thank you for listening to this episode of transmissions if you'd like to join the conversation travel to our discord channel at transmissionspodcast.com slash discord want some cool transmission swag feast your eyes on our transmissions gear at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop if you'd like to support our podcast Go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support or tell your friends about our show. We'll see you next time.